Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about Memento design pattern. And Memento design pattern is also one of the design pattern from the gang of four design patterns. Memento design pattern is also a behavioral design pattern. The main intent of this pattern is to capture and externalize an object internal state so that the object can be restored to this state later without violating the encapsulation. So to understand this pattern, let's consider the case of a standard video game or an employee management system where we need to capture the state of the object throughout the lifetime of the session. For example, when we are playing a video game, the state of the object or the video game that we are playing needs to be saved for the context of the user so that the user Let's say it is multiple state video game. The user can roll back to the previous state and continue playing from there rather than from the beginning of the application. Similarly, another classic example is, let's say, a Word application where we need the option to undo a particular statement that we written incorrectly. And similar to that, we can consider the employee management system, a standard HR system where the employee information is saved, but sometimes the employee information might have to be rolled back because of some incorrect typing of any information. So in today's video, to explain how the Memento design pattern work, we are going to consider the HR system where we have a system which manages the employee's information. And we are going to show how we can manage the state of the employee externally, but at the same time without violating the encapsulation. So in Memento design pattern, there are three main constituents. The first one is the main object, which states needs to be changed, which is essentially in our case, an employee. And then second one is the memento itself, which is nothing but an object which will be used to keep the state. And the memento object will have the exact same properties as the main employee object in our case. And then finally, there will be an employee manager who will be responsible for managing the actual state outside of the context of the employee. But at the same time, to preserve the encapsulation, the memento object will be created inside the employee itself rather than on the outside. So to show that, this is a project I have. And here we have the employee and the employee manager. So first I'm going to go ahead and create the employee class and then I will create the employee manager and in between the memento. So for the employee class, first let's consider its properties. So it can have a name, age, and phone. Let's say only these three properties. Of course, in a real life application, there will be so many more properties. And then similarly, we'll create a record class here called Memento. And it's going to have the same properties as the employee class. So it'll have a string name, age, and string phone. And then here what we are going to have is in the employee class, as I said, to maintain the encapsulation property of the employee, the employee itself will be responsible for creating the memento, which is the state at a particular moment. So for that, we are going to have public method called create, and which is just going to return a new memento with the name phone and age from the current object of its current state. And then finally, we need to provide a way to undo the state to the previous state or any other state for that matter. So for that, we'll have a method called public void undo. And undo is going to take a memento object here. And then what it is going to do is it's going to set the name equal to memento that name age equal to memento dot age and phone is equal to incoming memento dot phone. And then we can create 
an interface for employee though it's not going to be very useful for this example because we are just going to create the employee in program class so interface is not going to be very useful but in a real life example it will be so that's why i'm creating it just for the best practice okay next we are going to create the employee manager and as i mentioned before employee manager is the one who is actually responsible for keeping the states or storing the states externally now here I am going to use an in-memory collection, but in real life example, it can be any data store. It can be in-memory or it can be external storage like a Redis cache or a SQL Server database or a Postgres database or any other distributed database like AWS DynamoDB based on the application requirement. So here what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a private read-only stack and it's going to have memento so i'm going to declare this stack and this class will have a very simple responsibility it's going to provide a method to add the memento so add memento method which will take memento and when this method is called all it's going to do is it's going to push the memento into the in-memory stack. And then finally, it will have another memento to get the last state or the last memento in the stack. So for that, we are going to have a public memento get memento. And here, we are going to just do memento.pop. That's about it. Let me just extract an interface though it will probably not be useful for this example, but just for best practice, I'm going to create it. So this is how we created the employee, which is the actual object. Using create method, we can generate current state of the employee. And then using an undo, we can undo the state to any of the previous state from the memento object. An employee manager is responsible for saving the state of the memento externally. And in our case, we are just using an in-memory stack, but it can be any other external data source. So as you can see, the memento design pattern by nature is implementing all the principles of solid design pattern. It has a very well-defined responsibility for each of the class. Employee manager is responsible for saving the state, whereas employee is the actual object with its method to create a state as well as undo to a previous state. And now we are going to go into program class and we are going to tie everything up together. So in program class, we are going to start with creating an employee. And then from there, we are going to change the state and then we are going to undo the state. So first we are going to create a new employee. So our equal to new employee and for the employee we can give the name as employee and then age equal to 25 and then phone is equal to let's say one two three that's the new employee and then after that what we can do is we can create an employee manager And then after we create the employee manager, what we are going to do is we are going to add the initial state of the employee, which is the initial memento of the employee into employee manager. So we can do employee manager dot add memento. And here we can do employee dot create. So it's going to create the current state and return. And then after that, we can just do a console dot write line and we can say, Initial state and initial state is going to be employee.name, employee.age, and then finally employee.phone. That's the initial state. After this, let's go ahead and change the employee phone number because the employee asked to change the phone number. So we can do employee.phone is equal to three, four, five, six, seven. So that's the new phone number. And then we can add the employee manager dot add memento and we can get the current state of the employee. 
and then let's print out this state and let's get rid of this initial state so now we are printing out the state after the phone number update and then let's also change the age of the employee to instead of 25 let's say it's 35 and then after that also we can do employee manager dot add memento and we can create the current memento and then finally we can just go and print out now let's say after both of these are done the hr realized that the age was entered incorrectly so as the phone number it is for some other employee but by mistake it was added to this employee so now what we are going to do is we are going to do an undo operation so for undo operation we have to undo on the employee so we'll undo but we'll have to provide the state and for the state we are going to ask the employee manager to get the memento now here when we undo the state first time it is going to give the current state right because it is popping from the stack so we want to undo the state twice if we want to get back to the age of 25. So we are going to run the undo twice, which is going to give us the name as the same name. Age will be 25. Phone number will still be 3456. So then after that, we'll again do an employee.undo. And this time, we just have to undo once. So we can say employee manager.getMemento. So this is going to undo. And then we can print. And at this point in time, the state of the employee will be back to the initial state, which is name employee age 25 and phone equal to one to three. So now if I run this application, we can see the initial state is employee 25, one to three, then employee 25, three, four, five, six, that's the phone number change. Then employee 35, three, four, five, six, where the age is changed. Then we undo a couple of times. So we got back the age. Phone number is still incorrect. Then we undo once again and we got back the age and phone number back to the initial state. So this is a very simple example to show how Memento design pattern is implemented. As you can see, when we have a situation where we might have to do an undo, this design pattern comes in very handy. And there we can implement the undo operation part of the employee object itself and we can memento as a separate record just for the purpose of the model. Whereas the employee is going to contain the state and it will create a memento and then employee manager can essentially manage the state. Now if we are dealing with multiple employee which will be the case in which case the memento will not be stayed in a standard stack it will be a dictionary of employee id to stack so that for each employee ID, we can have their own state and the add memento at get memento will take the employee ID also as a parameter. So that's something is again, it's pretty straightforward to implement. And for that, we of course have to introduce the ID here and the same ID has to be used everywhere. So if we have to do that, we can say ID and then similarly, we can introduce ID here and similarly, we can introduce ID here and here we can pass the ID and then here also we can say ID memento.id and then we are going to change the implementation here a little bit say ID is equal to one so the ID and then the employee manager of course will have to take the ID ID in these two cases here and here and this will become a dictionary of int and a stack of memento and here also it will be new dictionary int stack of memento and when we have to push all we are going to do is we are going to do mementos of the key which is id push and mementos of the id dot pop now one thing we'll have to do here here the implementation is going to change a little bit because we have to make sure that if the if it does not exist so we have to check if mementos dot contain key of id and if it is if it does not contain the key then we have to do mementos.add 
and we have to add a new stack and then we can of course push the stack here so that's a simple change we have to do now if the key does not exist it's going to add a new entry for the stack and then it can push and then it can pop and then here in the main of course we'll have to pass the id as one for all the examples here so just have to do this and for get memento we're just going to pass the id and if we do that we run the application i got an error oh, i missed this okay now if we run the application we should see the exact same result as before just dealing with one employee but this implementation is going to support multiple employees and managing state of multiple employee so that is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting well out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video